Darshan Berlin. Well, from Munich in Germany is Peter Neumann. He's Professor of Security Studies at King's College London and joining us from New York later on, hopefully, Rukmini Kalimachi from the New York Times. But Peter Neumann, let's uh, talk to you first. Um, I mean, Angela Merkel went out of her way today, although she looked almost haunted to defend the security services. But the fact that this man managed to slip through the net of the German security, the Italian security, perhaps the French security, is pretty embarrassing, isn't it? It is. Uh, I, I, I do not personally think it is the fault of any particular individual. Too many mistakes have happened. My hunch is that this is a systemic failure. Uh, you have to understand that Germans have not been used to this kind of terrorist attack. What happened in Britain in 2005 has never happened in Germany. And so I think in many ways we were quite naive about what it takes to fight terrorism. We never suspected, even not this summer, that it would ever come to us in the way in which it did. And so I don't think the structures work. There are a lot of problems with different states operating with each other, states operating with mm -hmm. the federal system, but also different services competing with each other. Now is it the fact, the rather sad and tragic fact, that a country in Europe needs a tragic attack like this one in order to get savvy about how to deal with extremism? I think that's the unfortunate truth, and it's not only Europe. Let's not forget that before September 11, 2001, the United States were not particularly good and were not expecting a domestic attack within their territory. In Britain, before 2005, the services were not ready to focus on jihadist terrorism. And, you know, in many ways, the debates that were happening after 2005 in Britain, I expect now to happen in a very similar way in Germany with all the good and bad that may be involved. Now, we've talked a lot in the last year about the imminent death of Schengen. I mean, this doesn't help Schengen, does it? When... Um, jihadists are able to slip across borders without being detected. Is this now the death of Schengen? Well, I hope it isn't, because the Schengen system has brought a lot of good uh, to Europe. However, just like with the euro, a system was created without thinking through the consequences. If you have open borders within a vast area and different countries, you also have to make sure that security agencies are cooperating with each other seamlessly, that they are mm. exchanging data, for example. And right now, we have open borders in Europe, but we do have a number of different databases, and different countries are contributing to these databases based on the principle of, uh, of being voluntary. Right. So some countries are providing a lot of data, a lot of countries are not providing a lot of data at all. OK, stay there for a minute, Peter, and let's bring in Rukmini Kalimachi from the New York Times in New York. Um, welcome to the programme. I mean, you Thank wrote, you. I think, today that, um, although there's a lot of discussion about more surveillance, that people like this Tunisian suspect should have been surveyed more, more closely, surveillance doesn't always guarantee security. Now, why is that? We've seen over and over again that uh, in Europe especially, and also in America, people that were under surveillance, that were, that were being watched by law enforcement, somehow were able to slip the yoke and then go ahead and, uh, and, and carry out a terror attack. The Charlie Hebdo uh, shooters were under surveillance. Um, Amédi Koulibaly, who went on to do the Ypres Marché, uh, also in Paris, was under surveillance. Some of, many of the, uh, of the Paris attackers were on the terror list. What, what it means to be under surveillance is that these young men, and they're almost always young men, have been identified as being extremely radicalized. That's why they're put under surveillance. If they're already at the point of extreme radicalization, that likely means that they're in touch with the Islamic State or another terror group, and the Islamic State has become quite savvy um, at using encryption and using other means of camouflaging what they're doing so that they can escape um, the, the, the eyes of the law. In the case of the Charlie Hebdo shooters, uh, the way they did it is um, that the brothers ended up using the cell phones of their wives mm. to communicate because they realized that their wives were not under surveillance, but they were. So is the problem here that we're simply dealing with too many potential suspects? There simply aren't enough eyeballs in the security services across Europe to, to look out after all these people? 
that's certainly what officials are telling us, and um, I, I do have some compassion for them, given given the size of the problem now. There are so many uh, of the of these young people, um, especially in Europe, especially in France, uh, but also in Germany and elsewhere. Um, and it's 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 quite it's quite a a challenge uh, mm. for any nation uh, to be able to keep track of all right. of them. Let me ask you one other thing. I mean, there's been a lot of discussion politically um, and also in security circles about how much of a problem Angela Merkel inviting over a million um, refugees and migrants to her country has been in terms of security. And we know that this man arrived in Italy, supposedly, last year and then made his way to Germany. I mean, in terms of security, how much of a problem actually is it? I think that uh, what we need to keep in mind is, um, if, if I'm not uh, incorrect, more than a million uh, refugees have poured into Germany. Only a very small handful um, have gone on. It's, it's not even a handful. It's, it's really a fraction of a number have gone on to, to carry out attacks. Um, the Islamic State is grafting itself and piggybacking itself onto the refugee flow. Uh, but that doesn't change the fact that the vast majority of the, those people are coming to Europe because of a real need, without, without any uh, terror motive. Now, even without the refugee flow, um, we saw that Abdel Hamid Abaoud, who was, who was probably the most hunted man in Europe uh, in uh, 2015, was able uh, to return to Europe, pick up his little brother, and uh, slip back out through uh, the country of Greece, uh, back into the Islamic State, mm. and then somehow return to Paris without, right. without anybody knowing, right? Um, and so be before the refugee flow even, even reached its height, uh, uh, terror, t terror suspects were using um, uh, that passage to okay. get through. All right, Rukini Kalimachi, I'm afraid we've run out of time. Thank you very much indeed in New York and Peter Neumann in Munich. Thank you both of you for joining us. John.